Liberace, May 16, 1919 to February 4, 1987. For decades, Liberace was known for his music, Candelabra, Charisma, Diamonds and Dazzle. Over the years, Liberace acquired an astounding array of prestigious awards, including Instrumentalist of the Year, Best Dressed Entertainer, and Entertainer of the Year. He also earned two Emmy Awards, six gold albums, two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He's listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's highest paid musician and pianist. Best of all, he was known and loved throughout the world as Mr. Showmanship. Born in West Allis, Wisconsin in 1919, Wodziu, Polish for Walter, Valentino Liberace was one of four children of Salvatore and Francis Liberace. Music was the heart of the Liberace family. His Italian father played the French horn and became a member of the Milwaukee Philharmonic Orchestra. His Polish mother played the piano. Liberace's brothers and sisters, George, Angie, and Rudy, were also musically talented. When renowned Polish pianist Paderewski visited the Liberacis, he recommended Wodziu receive a scholarship to the Wisconsin College of Music. Liberace also studied privately. The eminent Florence Betre Kelly, a protege of Moritz Rosenthal, took charge of his classical training, which culminated with his debut at age 14 as soloist with the Chicago Symphony under the direction of Dr. Frederick Stott. In 1940, his nightclub dates took him to the Persian Room in New York's Plaza Hotel as an intermission pianist. Seven years later, he returned with his own oversized grand piano and his first trademark, a glittering candelabra. Acting on Paderewski's early advice, Liberace dropped his first two names, opting to use the elegant Liberace exclusively. In 1950, he made his first film debut as honky-tonk pianist in the movie South Sea Sinner with Shelley Winters. A little later, while playing a club date at the San Diego Coronado Hotel, he was discovered by a television producer. A local Los Angeles television show was created. First, a summer replacement for Dinah Shore, the show grew into a famous syndicated series and earned two Emmys for Liberace. Liberace's television series debuted in 1952. By 1954, it was carried over 217 American stations and in 20 foreign countries. With his own unique one-to-one -one relationship with the viewers, Liberace became television's first matinee idol in the true sense of the word. In 1954, Liberace played to a capacity crowd at Carnegie Hall, and in the same year, he made a record-breaking appearance before 16,000 at Madison Square Garden surpassing the previous record set by Paderewski. He packed an overcapacity crowd of 20,000 into the Hollywood Bowl, and he did it again at Chicago's Soldier's Field with an audience of 110,000. In 1955, Liberace opened in the Las Vegas Riviera Hotel as the highest paid entertainer in the city's history. He also made another movie, Sincerely Yours. Liberace turned to daytime television in 1960 with a series on ABC. In 1968, he returned to Europe to play to audiences in London. Liberace took Australia by storm in 1971, 
performed an unprecedented third Royal Command performance in London in 1972, and authored a best-selling autobiography, Liberace. His first book, Liberace Cooks, went to seven printings. In 1976, Rossett and Dunlap published his third book, The Things I Love. Then for three years, 1976 to 1979, Liberace was acclaimed Pop Keyboard Artist of the Year by Contemporary Keyboard Magazine. Liberace returned to television in 1978 with his first American TV special for CBS, followed by a second in February 1979. In 1977, Liberace founded the nonprofit Liberace Foundation for the Performing and Creative Arts. Liberace considered the foundation, which funds scholarships for schools and colleges across the nation, as one of his greatest achievements. On April 15, 1978, Liberace opened the Liberace Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. The museum serves as the key funding arm for the foundation. In 1980, Las Vegas named him both Star of the Year and Entertainment Personality of the Year. In 1981, Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters presented him with its coveted Golden Ike Award. In 1982, Liberace was voted to the Keyboard Magazine Hall of Fame by the publication's readers. Also in 1982, Liberace made a special showcase appearance at the Academy Awards, performing all five nominated film themes. Then in 1984 and 1985, Liberace broke all the box office records at Radio City Music Hall by selling out his performances. Liberace's final performances were at Radio City Music Hall October 16th through November 2nd, 1986. After his Radio City show, he went on a four-city tour to promote his fourth book, The Wonderful Private World of Liberace. Then he returned to his Palm Springs home, where he passed away on February 4th, 1987, just a few months before his 68th birthday. Liberace transported audiences to a dazzling world of color, joyful music, glittering costumes, and humor. Liberace had fun with his costumes, cars, and homes. One of his favorite songs was The Impossible Dream. And because he had truly mastered the art of believing, Liberace made his dreams come true. Television played a key role in the legendary career of Liberace, making him a household word to millions and the medium's first matinee idol. The performance you are about to see, Leapin' Lizards, It's Liberace, taped in 1978, was his first major television special from Las Vegas. The show was a spoof on a typical day in the life of Liberace, Mr. Showmanship, before he was off to work at the Las Vegas Hilton in his mirrored Rolls Royce. There's a view of the magnificent Liberace Las Vegas Villa, from his elaborate bedroom to his piano motif swimming pool. In this performance, Liberace is joined by his longtime friend Debbie Reynolds, Vince Cardell, the Chinese acrobats of Taiwan, puppeteer Barkley Shaw, and comedian Phyllis Diller. And what Liberace show would be complete without his sensational keyboard artistry? From a medley of Strauss waltzes to the beer barrel polka, you'll marvel at how Liberace turns a piano into a dazzling spectacle of sights and sounds. So now we invite you to sit back, relax, and prepare yourself to be entertained by Mr. Showmanship himself, the fabulous 
Liberace. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Las Vegas Hilton, Mr. Showmanship, Liberace. Look me over. <laughs> I didn't get dressed like this for just any old special. <laughs> How'd you like the entrance? Is that okay? <laughs> Wait till I tell you how I got the idea. I had the wonderful honor just recently of being invited over to London to give a Royal Command performance for the Royal Family. So after it was all over, I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a lasting remembrance of that beautiful occasion? So I brought back a souvenir, the Rolls Royce. Do you like it? Oh, thank you. And they tell me this is the only Phantom 5 Rolls Royce limousine in the world with a left-hand drive. So after I got it over here, I had to find me a left-handed chauffeur, right? I want you to meet my friend over there. That's Vince Cardell. Now, let me tell you about Vince. After I hired Vince to be my chauffeur, I discovered he plays marvelous piano. And later on in the show, you're going to hear Vince play the piano as well. How about that, okay? So let's say goodbye to Vince. Bye, Vince. Hey, I'm glad you like the car. It really stops traffic when I shop at Safeways. <laughs> Especially in this coat. <laughs> No, I'm kidding about that. This is the one I wore at the Royal Command performance. And you want to know something? I was the only one there with one like it. 
Oh, the Queen Mother felt the material and everything. Would you like to help yourself? Yeah, you know what it is? Virgin mink. Oh, it took forever to get the pelts. <laughs> well, listen, I'm glad you like the coat, but do me a favor. Take a fast look at it because I'm taking it off. It's hotter than hell. <laughs> It's just a little something I have hanging in the closet. <laughs> so now, are you ready for some music? How about that? Yeah. I'm going to play some songs for you tonight that seem to follow me around everywhere I go, and I hope I play one of your real favorites. But before I do, I wonder if you could do me a little favor. Would it be all right with you if I slipped out and got into something more spectacular? What do you think? Okay, I'll see you later. Leapin' Lizards, it's Liberace with his guest, Barkley Shaw, Vince Cardell, the Chinese acrobats of Taiwan, the internationally famous Dancing Waters, with special guest star, Debbie Reynolds, and a special appearance by Phyllis Diller.
must tell you, though, ladies and gentlemen, as beautiful as they are, I did have some slight reservations about using the dancing waters in my show because someone explained to me about the strange effect the sound of running water can have on an audience. And I want to thank you all for showing such beautiful restraint. I don't think I lost a single one tonight, did I? <laughs> well, now I have another surprise for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm always on the lookout for something new and unusual in the world of entertainment to introduce in my shows. And you are about to see one of the most daring, colorful, and thrilling acts in show business. And I'm very proud to bring them to Las Vegas where they're making their Las Vegas debut. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Chinese acrobats of Taiwan. <laughs> Wasn't that marvelous? 
Boy, after watching him do that, I'm so glad I play the piano. <laughs> Thank you.
applause with my little friend, Toto the Clown. <laughs> wonderful creator, Barkley Shaw. Here's a little trick I learned at the circus. I've been practicing it for months. Watch this. What do you think? Too much? You know what it is? Black diamond mink. Acres of it. Every time I wear this, I think of what Mae West once said when she said, too much of a good thing is wonderful. <laughs> Have you got some take it off music? Debbie, if she'd be a guest on my show, that she could borrow the coat. <laughs> of all the wonderful talent that plays this famous Las Vegas strip, she is one of the greatest. And she's my friend, too. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Debbie Reynolds. I love being here. Thank you. Really, if there's ever anything at all that I can do for you personally, yeah? boy, I'd sure like to try. How about that mink coat, huh? Anything but that. <laughs> <laughs> but there is one favor I'd like to ask you. What's Could that? you play for me? The huh? piano? Yeah, uh-huh. It's not exactly what I had in mind, but I'd love to. <laughs> all right. I love it. 
Well, I have the most expensive accompanist in show business. Not really. I work for the government at a percentage. <laughs> Me too. Ooh. What would you like to do, Debbie? Well, let's see. What I'd like to do is what we rehearse. Okay. <laughs> Together at last. Together forever. We're tying a knot. They never can sever. I don't need sunshine now to turn my skies to blue. I don't need anything but you. You wrapped me around. I did. Your cute little finger. You made life a song. You made me the singer. Oh, and what's that bad talk to? I always buh buh boo. Buh 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 boo. I don't need anything, anything but you. You know what, Lee? What? Yesterday was plain awful. <laughs> you can say that again. I will. Yesterday was plain awful. But that's not, not now. That's, that's then. <laughs> You're poor as a mouse. No. I'm richer than Midas, but nothing on earth no, could ever divide us. And, and if tomorrow, tomorrow I'm an apple seller too, what is it? I don't need anything but you. Oh, yeah. How am I doing, Debbie? Oh, Lee, just fine. That's fine. You know where this music is from? No, Lee, where is this music from? Hmm? It's from Annie, the new musical all about the little orphan Annie. You're kidding. And Daddy Warbuck? Yeah, too? weren't they some? <laughs> they were wonderful. Oh, Leap and Lizards, let's go. Oh. Each other, or else we'd go kerplop. I used to need work to fill every hour. I need the feeling, that feeling of power. Now every other need has disappeared from you. I don't need anything but you. All the pianos that you're going to see in the show are from my personal collection. And I suppose if I were to pick out a favorite, it'd be the next one you're going to see. I'm rather proud of that one with all the mirrors on it. Uh, there are only two in the whole world like it. And I got both of them. <laughs> Which brings me to another promise that I made to you. Uh, you're about to uh, meet once again a very talented young man that I'm very proud of. I really did hire him just about two years ago while I was appearing in New York to be my chauffeur. And after he worked for me for a while, I discovered that he too had been playing the piano most of his life. However, when I first met him, he played the piano by ear. But during our association, I had the wonderful pleasure of teaching him to read music as well. And I must say, he's one of the fastest learning and most brilliant students I've ever had. And I'm truly proud to refer to him as my protege. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet my friend Vince Cardell. I also had two suits. <laughs> I know what you ladies are thinking. If he plays as good as he looks, he's got it made, right? Wait till you hear. Vince, would you like to tell him what we're going to play? Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
our good friends Darius and Carlos are going to join us in a little Latin American fun. Okay, uh, Vince and I will start it, okay, fellas? And then when you get the message, jump in with the coochie coochie. <laughs> no kidding, if the beads are turned the wrong way, it's murder. <laughs> One bead will do it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this is rather a special year for me in Las Vegas. And I may even surprise you a little when I tell you this is my 34th year in Las Vegas. What do you think about that? And they said I wouldn't last. <laughs> Speaking of celebrations, tonight we have a couple with us who were just married today. And it's so seldom I get a chance to dedicate a number to newlyweds this late in the evening. So if you don't mind, I'm going to do a special number just for them because they're a very special couple. It so happens it's the second time around for both of them. She's 65 and he's 71. Isn't that something? And they requested a very beautiful song. It's impossible. <laughs> That's the name of the song.
Don't be afraid to ask to see anything. <laughs> if I got it, I'll show it. What, I heard somebody, what, who wants to feel the material? Oh, sure, madam, you can feel it. Right about here is where I get the message. Yeah. Oh, do the other one, I don't want to be frustrated. Oh, what's this, what's this, let me see the... Oh, what'd you have to do to get that? <laughs> well, I had to make a promise. You did? Yes, a guy was beating on my door, and I promised to let him out. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Phyllis Diller. All during the show, you know, I've been hearing little things like, I wish he'd show us the rings. You want to see the rings, do you? Sure, okay. All right. <laughs> this first one here is the candelabra ring. That was given to me by Bill Hera up at Lake Tahoe in Reno. And this next one is a Russian sapphire. My mother gave me that for Christmas. It's been in our family for about three generations. This is the piano ring, and you know who presented that to me? Baron Hilton. And guess what went with the piano ring? A $3 million contract with the Hilton Hotel here in Las Vegas. Isn't that fantastic? Wow! <laughs> oh, you're right, Phyllis. Phyllis said the ring would have been enough. <laughs> oh, and this one I'm very proud of. This is what they call a royal amethyst. And it's appropriately named because that's the ring that was presented to me in London when I did the Royal Command performance for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> this one's pretty too, but it doesn't represent anything. It's just made out of the leftovers. <laughs> So cute, I heard somebody say, how does he play the piano with all those rings on? Very well. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. I'm Look. gonna show you one I have, darling. It's a beauty. Don't you like it, sweetheart? It's just a little something that I have left over. Oh, it's nice to have a big one if you have a choice, isn't it, Shasha? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, my stones aren't large, but I have to do anything to get mine. Oh, you never know, you know, you never know. Practice makes perfect enemies, we <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Zsa, Zsa Gabor, as played by Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> oh, and listen, I gotta show you the watch because that's shaped like a piano. Look at that. And the watch is underneath the diamonds in case you have to tell the time, you know. You press two diamonds, the lid opens up. Yeah, oh, it's a very good timepiece. Yes, I'll check it out for you. I got uh, 24 rubies after nine diamonds. Is that what you got? <laughs> oh, great. Oh, and the bracelet is the only thing I have that has my nickname on it. My friends call me Lee. It's one of my nicer nicknames. I have others. <laughs> you want to see it all up close there? I'm glad you want to see it because, let's face it, you bought it. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I used to have a swimming pool shaped like a piano once upon a time, but I got rid of it. Piano tuner damn near drowned. Oh, let me show the folks over there. It's all included in the minimum. <laughs> sure, here you go. That cute, she snuck a little feel there, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever you're doing, honey, keep doing it. Oh, let me show the little boy here. See what you get if you practice? Great. Hey, you look familiar. Are you by any chance from my hometown, Milwaukee? Well, bless your heart for coming. I recognize there's some old friends of mine here from Milwaukee, my hometown. When I say old friends, I can remember when they used to call me Liberace. Yeah, right? They even remember when I used to wear my brother George's hand-me-downs. <laughs> now he wears my linings. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, can I play a little number for them just for old times' sake? Okay? Good. It's one I used to do when I was a kid in Milwaukee. It's called the Beer Barrel Polka. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a wonderful evening being with all of you. And before I say goodnight, I'd like to sing one little song that I used to sing at the close of all my television shows back in the 1950s. It's one of my favorites. So for old time's sake, here it is again. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. In that small cafe, the park across the way the children's carousel the chestnut trees the wishing well I'd like to thank my guests the Chinese acrobats of Taiwan Barkley Shaw Vince Cardell and my special guest, Debbie Reynolds, for being with us tonight. And of course, all of you. So until we meet again, ladies and gentlemen, I'll find you in the morning sun. And when the night is due, I'll be looking at the moon but I'll be seeing you You've been a beautiful audience. Bless you. But now I must fly. Even lizards, you see, I'm doing my part to conserve gas. Mary Poppins, eat your heart out. Everybody knows I'm an incurable collector. You know, I collect pianos and cars and dogs and talented people that I use in my shows. This lovely piano was designed by the famous artist Andre Boulle in the early 1850s in Paris, France. This is a real uh, museum piece. I found this piano in London. It's all inlaid with various kinds of uh, marquetry and wood that uh, is very, very decorative and very pretty. And this one is, uh, dates back to the 1800s. And all of my pianos, whether they're old or new, are very uh, uh, playable. In other words, I keep them in top condition. 
This is a fun piano. This piano was uh, a result of a party I gave. I gave everybody a package of jewels and some glue. And I said, do your own thing. And when they were all through, this is the way it looked. Everybody jeweled it. Cost me a few drinks, but it was worth it. This is an authentic Nickelodeon piano that dates back to 1925. This Baldwin Grand was designed by John Hancock, and the design was inspired by Jonathan Livingston Siegel. This is the piano I had in my home in Malibu, in California. And this is my proudest possession. This hand-painted Playel Concert Grand Piano dates back to the early 1800s, and it was actually played upon by Frederick Chopin at Versailles Palace in the presence of his friends George Sand and Franz Liszt.